Pulsar just released their new Thermion XM30, which is a good entry level thermal. I haven't gotten my hands on it. A lot of y'all have asked me if I've gotten my hands on it. It literally was just released. So there's a lot of new guys out there in the thermal world. And so I'm putting this video together for you folks who are newbies. I've been doing this for a long time. And so here's a string of videos on how not to make a mistake on shooting a cow or a horse, but more importantly, um, looking for identification markers on what a hog looks like. I'm not gonna spend any time on large sounders since they are the easiest to identify. I'm gonna spend the majority of our time together on small sounders and solo boars since they can be the most difficult to identify for first time hunters. There are certain tells or identification markers that give a hog away. The first and foremost is not your thermal at all, but your ears. Small groups of hogs, particularly the young ones in a small group are very vocal and make a lot of noise while moving from point A to point B. So use your ears. The first visual tell or identification mark is their feeding nature. Hogs always seem to be on the move while they're feeding. If they are in a group, they tend to move more competitively and more aggressive while they're feeding. As a visual comparison, both raccoons and possums can look like a hog while feeding. This is one of the major complaints about a thermal is ranging them at distance in the size of the animal. A raccoon at 30 yards can look like a hog at 100 yards. The best way I've been able to distinguish if it's a hog, raccoon, or possum is to return back to their feeding nature. Again, hogs always seem to be on the move while eating. I've witnessed both raccoons and possums pause just momentarily while they're feeding, unlike a hog. This leads to the second tell or identification mark, the hog's head. It is best to try to get a full visual of the animal, but if all you have is a forward view, the neck, head, and body of a hog is one continuous line or one continuous unit. A deer feeding can look like a hog, so you need to be patient and watch. A deer's movement is much slower and more graceful than a hog, but if you've never seen one before, it can be easily mistaken. A deer feeds much slower, and they will eventually look up as a means of protection and preservation. A deer's neck and legs will always be its obvious identification mark, so just be patient. Cows also can look like a hog to the untrained eye. Cows move in large groups just like hogs do in a sounder. The most obvious difference between cows and hogs are cows are a lot more clumsy and slow in their movement. And like deer, cows often raise their head while they're feeding. My experience with raccoons is they have a tendency to move more right and left, forward and backwards, just like a hog, but more aggressively. Possums commit to a steady line, so if you're unsure with the forward position of your target, the next thing to try to focus on are the point tips of a hog's ears. The ears of a hog's will protrude above the body line of a hog if they look up. Both a raccoon and possum's body will narrow down towards the front end of their body, and it's very difficult to see their ears, unlike a hog. The final tell or identification marker that I look for on a hog is its tail. Some entry-level thermals may not be able to spot this, but if your thermal can't see the tail, just look at the overall body of the hog. It will look like a feeder barrel moving across the ground. With better thermals, you can see more detail distinguishing a deer, a cow, a varmint, and a hog. Better thermals will also be able to spot a hog's tail clearly. The most difficult hog to identify is one in the high summer grass. My suggestion to you is literally to call out to the hog, whistle, or bark just like you would a deer. If it's a deer, you'll be able to identify its neck protrusion. If it's a hog, they will usually stop, stick their snooter up in the air, but more importantly, this will be a clear target to shoot at. My biggest advice for you first-time thermal shooters is to spend more time in the field and just observe the animal in their nature. They all move just unique enough if you watch this video over and over again, or if you spend more time in the field, you'll be able to learn and identify each species. Share this video with your new thermal hunting buddies. If you have any other suggestions or advice, please comment below. If you're interested in getting into the thermal market, please contact me at the email below. And as always, stay tuned for my next adventure.